Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. My name is Iqbal Chaudhary. Uh, I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering at Hopkins uh, and the director of education and graduate consulting club. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here. Uh, today, uh, this is going to be the first installment of the fireside management chat. And the idea of this uh, lecture series is going to be uh, to solve uh, or to answer some of the burning questions that we have. Uh, I mean, if we want to join consulting, some questions like uh, what is consulting? What exactly are the skill sets that I need to join a consulting company? Uh, or some general questions like how do I transition from academia to industry after a PhD, let's say. So the list is endless. Uh, therefore, we bring you fireside management chat. Every other Friday, we will sit together and try to learn um, something very cool about management. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, today's speaker, Leslie Kendrick. Leslie is a senior lecturer at the Center for Leadership Education at Hopkins. Uh, she has 12 years of experience as a marketing practitioner. Uh, and today, Leslie will provide a brief overview of key marketing concepts. Uh, and then we will do a quick uh, short case analysis on the launch of two new uh, products. So uh, before we go ahead, I would like to, well, yeah. Can you guys please uh, download two files and the link to the download, the link to the Google Drive is in the chat box. So if you can't download those two files, those two files will be necessary for the case analysis. And if you can't download it, just send me your email ID and I'll share those uh, quickly with you. Uh, other than that, um, I think we are good to go. Some housekeeping rules. So just keep your microphone mute, muted while the presentation is going on. You can type in all your questions uh, through the chat box and I'll try to organize them for Leslie later. And this talk is being recorded for, uh, I mean, we want to keep the content for future members. Uh, so if you have any issues with that, you can just turn off your cameras. So over to you, Leslie. Um, yeah, okay, you can, thank you. you. Can, you can thank this. you very thank you very much. Okay. And so um, could you please send the link again on chat? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I am doing that. He'll he'll monitor that. Okay, so um, as was mentioned, uh, my name is Leslie Kendrick. Uh, I, you'll you have a if they believe in the announcement, you have a little bit on my background. I worked in industry for about 12 years uh, in marketing management in several different functional areas of marketing. So I actually worked in outside sales. I worked in um, um, product and marketing management and uh, I had a role uh, that was kind of a hybrid marketing and finance role. It was called business manager in the international division of the publishing company uh, that I worked at for seven years. And that was Lippincott, Williams and Wilkins, which, is, which was since taken over by Walters Kluwer. Some of you may read their journals um, in any case, uh, so uh, as, as was mentioned in the bio, I teach on the Homewood campus. I teach only undergrads right now full time uh, in the Center for Leadership Education, which is kind of the entrepreneurship hub uh, and also houses, uh, houses our business minors uh, for the undergrads on Homewood. Um, so I've actually taught full time now, uh, transitioned into teaching uh, a while back and have been teaching now for about 19 years. Um, uh, most of that full time. So a couple years part time, raised a couple kids and uh, that's where I am. Um, all right, so before I actually jump into the slides, I wanted to ask students here. Um, I wanted to ask you a question and I'm going to ask only one student to refrain from typing in the chat. So I want to hear from everyone except the Cary School student, Matthew, because Matthew is going to probably uh, nail the answer to this. So I would like to ask you to chat, put in the chat uh, what you think marketing is, just in a sentence. What, what is marketing? So just type whatever comes to mind, a couple of words, a phrase, anything. And I just uh, would like to kind of get a read. Okay. And I need more than one. So for those of you not on your, I think two of you are on your phone. Okay, influencing people. All right. Um, what else? Is everyone else on their phone? <laughs> Branding and advertising, thank you. Promoting product brand, creating value. Okay, okay, good. That's a wonderful start. That's a wonderful start. Uh, suppliers, product prices. All right. 
All right, sounds good. All right, so let's uh, uh, just jump into the agenda for today. I'm going to be very brief going through uh, a couple of slides, just a really brief overview because I do want to spend the time doing what I would call one case component or one component of a marketing case that I typically use. I've used actually for this club before in the past and, and students seem to like working through it. So it's not a complete case because that would be kind of challenging to cover in just one hour or a little less than an hour. All right, so um, here's a little info. Whoops, let me go back. Uh, a little info again on, on myself. Here's my email address if anyone wants to follow up. It's kendrick at shahu.edu. I see I didn't change the date to 2020. Ha, huh, that's an interesting thing to have forgotten. So I pulled this up from last year. My apologies. Um, okay, so uh, a little bit of a career bio. Uh, these are the companies I've worked for. I worked uh, for a coat manufacturer, London Fog. I worked for a medical journal publisher and I worked for a college textbook publisher. Um, written a couple of uh, cases for a, a marketing textbook. Um, our agenda for today. So um, I'm going to provide a very cursory overview of marketing. Um, and so there are plenty of marketing books out there. There are books on entrepreneurship if you're looking to start a business. Um, so, you know, uh, let me know if you, if you are looking for additional reading. Um, we're going to focus mostly today on reading a very short case uh, around a company called Apex Chemical. Uh, this really lends itself to doing a, a quick analysis. Um, it's kind of fun and interesting, and it really doesn't matter that it's a chemical case. This is about a company uh, trying to decide um, between two different products to launch, um, and, uh, and you'll see what factors kind of come into play. So the one thing about case analysis, while you do gain some insight into certain industries, um, uh, there's a lot of... Um, you know, the lessons learned uh, translate across industries, okay? So that's the value of case analysis. So, uh, and then I'll give you an epilogue and tell you what the company actually did after you decide what your recommendations are. All right, so uh, coming back to the definition of marketing, uh, there is an American Marketing Association and this is their definition. So, Yes, it includes uh, communicating, delivering, exchanging offerings. There is value for customers. And so uh, a good number of, of the pieces of what you entered in the chat do apply. Um, so sometimes I ask this question and, and students will say, uh, I want to understand uh, how, how marketers make me buy things. And <laughs> And, uh, and I come back and say, you know, who is twisting your arm and, and taking that money out of your wallet? It's, you know, it's really up to you. And marketers are really looking to, um, to develop products that have points of difference and, and identify needs and try to capture those needs through new products that they develop. Um, if there isn't a need, a product is not going to last long. Um, all right, so the strategic marketing process, and, and you've probably had some exposure to this if you're doing pro bono consulting. So the strategic marketing process fits into that overarching strategic planning process, which every organization goes through, usually annually. And strategic plans can be one-year plans, five-year plans, 10-year plans, and, and uh, strategic plans involve you know, the CEO on down. Um, the marketing planning and the strategic marketing process is managed by the marketers um, within that framework. So once corporate goals and plans are set, these are the stages. So you have planning, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with the SWOT analysis. Um, the market product focus is, is just uh, assessing uh, what the marketplace, what the market looks like. Um, what products you bring, you have in the market, how you're doing with those, and then uh, thinking about uh, if you, whether or not you want to focus on new markets, new products, or a combination of those two. Um, goal setting, obviously, uh, in a marketing plan, in the marketing planning process or strategic marketing process, uh, you've you've got to outline goals. Um, you know, what markets do you want to be in? Uh, what percent of the markets do you want to capture? Um, you know, unit, dollar sales, all of those things. Um, 
The marketing plan is executed in the implementation phase. And so the marketing plan is essentially your roadmap. And so in many of my roles, my jobs, I was developing marketing plans for um, medical journals, what have you. Um, in the evaluation phase, I, I think that um, when students uh, complete one of my courses, even my basic marketing class, uh, I think most students um, are, I think, a little surprised at, at how, how involved, I think is the word, how involved and kind of expansive um, marketing is. So a, a, a good marketer is going to look at results, look at results, evaluating them against goals, and, um, and look for deviations, look for where uh, you surpassed your goals, where you fell short, and then you're going to make adjustments for that planning stage as you go through that the next cycle, whether that's a year from now or what have you. Um, okay, and so um, one of the core concepts or just uh, constructs is the marketing mix. And so this graphic, I, you know, I just, I pulled this uh, from the web and and just uh, outlines the marketing mix of the four P's, all of which are um, are part you know comprise uh, you know or represent the company the company organization strategy, okay. Um, all right, and so segmentation, market segmentation is important, and 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 uh, in terms of the ability to group buyers into segments that have common needs. Um, there's, there's no marketer that has an unlimited budget, even, even at the largest firms, you know, when the budgets are really large, they're still never unlimited and it is a waste of resources to throw things at a wall and, uh, or just to, uh, you know, spend to go target everyone. It's just, it's just not, uh, not efficient. So these are uh, the definition and reasons that, that segmenting your market, grouping your customers into subgroups is important. Um, it allows you to tailor the marketing mix to these specific segments, okay? So, um, you know, I may have segments, uh, you know, if I have a, um, a device that um, is a, uh, a needle for testing for type two diabetes, I might be marketing that to elderly people, but I might also be marketing it to uh, the to, to individuals that have elderly relatives that they're caring for. And how I market and reach those two segments to get my messaging out is going to be very different. They will consume different media. Um, they will have different consumer behavior. Uh, some may be on the web purchasing, some may not be. Um, and okay, so that is just uh, kind of tailing, giving a, a tangible example to, um, to the importance of segmentation. Um, all right, uh, I threw this slide in. Um, you know, many of you conduct research around your, your, your PhD, you, you, academic research. Um, market research is something that is going to come up in this very short case that we're doing. And so I wanted to provide at least a couple of, of examples of why market research might be done. And it's, it's done for a whole, uh, a very broad array of reasons, but it certainly can inform the development of new products and it certainly can uh, inform ways to improve products, okay? And uh, this is the BCG, Boston Consulting Group Matrix, which is kind of a hallmark in, in most marketing textbooks, just um, you know, showing relative market share and, and market share growth. Uh, and in my career, I had my share of marketing all of these. So I had stars, I had cash cows, I had dogs, I had question marks. Um, one of the question marks was a journal that wasn't performing uh, for us, but we managed to sell it to a smaller publisher that had lower overheads and um, and they were able to make it profitable. So um, so yes. All right. Um, another important thing to recall and or just uh, to consider, and and this should be helpful with your future speakers if they're walking you through a complete case or what have you. If you're looking at selling to businesses versus selling to consumers, um, the characteristics are quite different. And and so if you launch a business or if you work in a business, you will know 
that you have fewer customers if you're selling to businesses that they are most likely going to um, involve, if you're in the sales process, they're going to be multiple decision makers. The negotiations, therefore, are going to be more complex and take longer. And um, one of the other really important things is that the main promotional method uh, in, in selling to businesses is going to be personal selling. So if you think about having a product, whether it's, um, okay, so let's see, um, in my medical publishing days, we had what we called bulk subscription deals or sponsorship programs that we sold to pharmaceutical companies. The pharmaceutical companies would then um, have some kind of, uh, there'd be some kind of thank you or welcome note. Sometimes we had their name uh, on the cover of the journals and the journals went to fellows or residents in training who received this journal free of charge. So the pharmaceutical companies underwrote uh, the cost of these medical journals and then placed ads and, and did some branding themselves. So the idea was to engender uh, some affinity with that company over the year that the resident or fellow in medical school would be receiving that journal. So those types of programs, um, you know, they, you know, are, um, could have made our company $50,000 or a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, um, but they were much more involved to sell because of the scope of the programs, multiple decision makers, all of the characteristics in this middle column. Um, all right. Uh, so let me come back to any questions before we jump into the Apex case, which we're going to need a little time to, uh, to read. Any questions on anything that I've presented so far? Okay. I don't know. Am I am I missing anything in the in the chat? Let me let me take. Whoops. No, not really. Something just. Uh, I just hit the wrong button. Let me go back to where I was. Slide normal. Okay. All right, so, um, shoot, hang on one second. All right, so um, what I'd like everyone to do, uh, you're going to read the Apex chem uh, chemical case, but I need to explain the instructions. What I'd like to do is, it, should we even try to put people in breakout rooms for this or have it, it's a little more fun, but I, I don't know how many are on their phones. I think uh, there is one person, uh, Joe Variel is on. Yeah. Phone, I think. And well, we can I, try the breakout. I, I, break, yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you think? Room. We'll try the breakout rooms. Okay. So Perfect. we'd like to break people out in pairs, but let me walk you through some of these handouts first. Um, basically, I'm asking you to read what's, what's actually a dialogue between a couple of uh, executives at a chemical company. Um, and interesting to know, to take note of, is the title of each of these executives. So you have a vice president of research, which is like market research. Okay, so that, that uh, person is going to oversee the research that's done around new product development. You have the president of the company as another person, obviously is going to have a certain perspective. And then you have a vice president of marketing who oversees marketing and the sales force. So you have these three different roles. And, and one thing that's, that comes out in the case is that they have different perspectives, okay? And so you are presented in this case with two possible product launches. And what I'd like you to do is to, um, I wanna share a screen here on, this was one of the handouts in the chat. This is the Excel spreadsheet. So this is an example with the ABC company of a summary assessment table, which is done in conjunction with one of the case components that I call the analysis of alternatives. So um, again, this is just one case component. And um, what I like to, uh, to suggest to students is that they think about, as they read the case, they think about um, which criteria here um, which criteria would be most relevant to assess based on the focus of this case? So I think it'll make sense as you read the case. Um, the one caveat is that 
I always require, and there is a reason I require profitability as um, one of the three criteria. So uh, you have a choice uh, of choosing two from these others, strategic or organizational fit. So how does this particular product fit with what the company's doing now? Resource requirements um, can be uh, what will it take corporately, financially, and human resource requirements. And then the third is competitor reactions. So if you were to launch product A or product B, what type of competitor, competitor reactions might you see? Um, and so in this, it's a very simple, uh, simple analysis. Um, you are rating each alternative one and alternative two. So what I'd like you to start off with is change this and just type A115, which is the one of the products uh, proposed and this one is B227. And so if we can get at the end for someone, you know, someone to share a screen, that would be super. But basically I want you to think about um, the weight out of 1.0. And so this is just arbitrary for this chart. Um, you're going to think about the weight. So of, organ of the three criteria you chose. So profitability is required for Apex, but I'm going to let you choose those two. You can also um, modify these weights. Now, would I make profitability like 0.1 out of 1.0? Probably not because this is a corporate decision and making money is important, but you have the ability to change those weights. The ratings are on a scale of one to five. So um, you are going to type in a rating and then the weight times the rating is a formula that's already in this for you. And this is the credit to the uh, textbook that I originally pulled this from. Does this make sense in terms of what I'm asking you to do? Select three relevant criteria, select two other than profitability, uh, touch up the weights, but make sure they're still out of 1.0 and then let this calculate. And so then you're, what you're going to do is you are going to compare these two numbers. So if they're close, even if they're not close, I want you to think about qualitative aspects in the case and which one you'd recommend the, pro the company launch and why. So this is one way to kind of um, quantify um, and add to the qualitative assessment that you would, uh, that you would uh, perform in a case analysis, okay? Um, and it lends itself for, in, uh, for a very short period of time. All right, so um, let me stop sharing that and just see. All right, so do we wanna send people into rooms? I could yes. just- Yes, just before that, I, I wanted to clarify if everyone has uh, the Excel sheet and the, docu uh, the, the two documents that uh, is in the G drive. So you can uh, raise your hands virtually in the, if you go to participants or you can just react with a thumbs up. Does everyone have the sheet? Uh-oh. They should have it. Like, uh, okay, so Joe has it. Is Joe the only one who has access? Okay, okay, here he has it. reaction thumbs. That works if yep. you don't have video. <coughs> what about others? Okay, very cool. So what about Nina, Quile, and Harpreet? Maybe they're not responding. So let me create the breakout rooms and uh, we can take from there. So I just got to lab trying to start my laptop. If I should go ahead, I should go to participate. Okay, no problem. Let's create the breakout rooms. And set. <laughs> Yes. 
previously I created the rooms. I think they are joining the rooms one by one. So Leslie, do you want me to assign you to one of the rooms one by one? Uh, no, actually, we'd like to give them a couple minutes and then come okay. back and just yeah. do a debrief if they can just yeah. complete the spreadsheet. So um, uh, do you want to, yeah, they've got to read the case, complete the spreadsheet, and our stopping is at one. So I would say it, you know, um, it's can we go a little bit over, like 105? Okay. We, should, we should probably have 10 minutes to discuss. We can do a little less than 10 if we need to. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So let me know when you want to uh, close the breakout rooms and Yeah, it may be nice to broad to send them a note saying um, in the breakout room that they have until whatever time to complete the spreadsheet. Do you want to say 1250 Yeah, sounds good. And if you have a chance, you could read the case too. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. So I have to open the Excel sheet, right? That's where the case is. I think the case is a PDF. I just told them that they have time and they like it. So how many rooms do you, are you working with now, two? Yeah, two. Okay. long conversation.
So if you would like to put me in one room and then move me, um, maybe I'll do that and just see if there are any questions or. Ah, okay. They are right on target. How about the other room? <laughs> yeah. Let me do that. So I, I'm trying to add you to group uh, breakout room too. Could you join? Uh, don't see the thing yet. Mm. Let me try it again. Hang on a second. Mm. Oh, shoot. Hang on. Now I see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. How's it going? It's typical. So the group two is some of them were still reading. So okay, that, yeah. that's the thing with going jumping in the rooms too soon. It's they're still reading it. But yeah, but I said you have about four minutes to do your spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. So the only place, so the relative weights is common uh, for both products. And the only, the only changes that you can make once you are sure about the relative weight are the ratings, right? So that's where you change the ratings and get. Um, um, you can actually change the relative weights act as, as well. Okay. So that is something you can play around with. But in my example, I would not suggest changing profitability to be a very tiny fraction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah, understood. And the ratings will come from like the case conversation that, that is in the PDF, right? So, so the are... weight, this is the relative weight times the rating. So in the in the top left, the one that's blank right now, um, yeah, this would yeah. be 0.3 times five is 1.5. So I've already formulated that column. So if someone were to type in these, it would calculate itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the I got it. same thing. So eventually, based on the final uh, output, you decide which product you want to go forward with. You look at the numbers, but the numbers don't always tell the whole picture. So oftentimes the numbers are fairly close, but it's it's going to be it's it's really going to depend on which criteria you choose and how you weight them as well. So there are trade-offs between you know you know the idea here is to not only rely on the numbers to think about the issues and the company and the actual uh, other qualitative aspects that are described yeah. um, and kind of compare both the chart and the qualitative issues and make an assessment or make a recommendation. Got it. So yes, marketing is very inexact. <laughs> Unlike <laughs> many of the programs yeah. that, that yeah. You, you all are involved in. Yeah. Okay, one more minute to go. Yeah, we can give them another. Yep.
you want me to close it now? Sure. Okay. They will be back in 30 seconds. All right. Okay, so um, let's actually start off by asking uh, for a one sentence kind of uh, synopsis of, of, uh, of the case in the and what you just read. Just one, a one sentence or one or two sentences. Who would like to uh, jump in and, um, and just state uh, What's what's happening and what you know, how would you characterize what's going on? Joe, you're you're the only one with video activated, yeah. so you're you're it. <laughs> I guess that puts me on the spot. Yeah, so um Apex Chemical uh has a meeting with their upper level management where they're deciding whether to um pursue one of two new products that they've uh, researched. And one of the products is uh, A115, which is uh, an electrolysis product in a, a market that the company is not currently operating in um, that has uh, a single competitor who owns 95% of the market share. Um, the other product, B227, is a plastic oxidizer um, for which they have existing products in that market. Uh, and additionally, it's a more competitive landscape. There are multiple other companies that make plastic oxidizers. Okay. Um, additionally, there are two different types of plastic oxidizers. Um, the beta, sorry, I, I can't remember the specific name, uh, but- Don't worry about it. Two yeah, different kinds yeah. is fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so that was actually way more in depth than 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 uh, than needed, but that uh, that pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, characterizes what's going on. Um, let's let's actually come back to uh, perspectives of the players, the executives uh, in this case. Um, so where is Matthew? Matthew, I know you're there. Um, what's yeah, the I'm president's here. What's the president's priority? Uh, so the priority of, of the president, I believe, is the the profit. Uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, the company can make as much money as possible. Okay. And uh, I, who else do we have here? Who else is, is, uh, is live and would like to contribute? Tell me what the perspective is of the VP of research. Do we have anyone else who'd like to, um, to jump in the VP of research? Anushwati, you want to go uh, Yeah. He, uh, he definitely wants to sell the best product. Wants to sell the best product that's proven through the market research that's been conducted, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the superior product. And then what's the uh, perspective of the VP of marketing, the vice president of marketing? It's a little different. It's not quite, uh, who'd like to uh, offer that one? Um, uh, he doesn't want to lose his foothold on the already existing market with the product that they already have. Okay, okay. Um, is he concerned about launching the superior product or something else? What, what seems to be what seems to be his kind of a little more perspective on that VP of marketing? He focuses more on market needs, like what the market wants. Okay, okay. He, he's focusing on it. He has a comfort level with where his organization currently 
has 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 resided in terms of that market sector, that market space where the B two two seven resides. Okay, so now um, you know in in looking at um, in looking at this case, um, w one thing I think that's 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 blatantly obvious is that um, you know just because a, a market size is is greater that that may not necessarily mean there's more for everybody and, uh, and that's the way to go. Um, but so what you have here is kind of almost a clash of, of um, perspectives, um, the VP marketing versus the VP of research who, who claims to have the superior product. Um, as was mentioned uh, so well by Joe, um, the characteristics of the market uh, for A115, and I'm just going to use the, the letters and numerals because I don't know exactly how to pronounce some of these chemical, um, you know, compounds either. Um, so A115 uh, is, is supposedly a technical breakthrough. Um, uh, there is one competitor, uh, but apparently um, people are 95% satisfied with Hamfield, this competitor. The market size is $10 million a year. Um, it is not growing, it's level, okay? So that's another thing we look at with, with, growth, with case alternatives, right? Is the market level growing, declining? Um, and then there's some superiority in the market research. B227, uh, Apex has a reputation with plastic oxidizers. So Apex is well known in this sector, um, but this product is not better there is no point of difference or superiority versus the existing products. Uh, there are three strong competitors and then six off-brand competitors. So I assume that the three are branded and the other ones are off-brand, maybe private label. It is a $40 million market. It is four times the size um, in revenue potential. Um, and oxidizer sales uh, are 25% of Apex's total sales but Apex's sales are down 10% in this area while the total market is growing. Okay, also something that's noteworthy. All right, who would like to share their spreadsheet? I'd like to see from both groups if we have time. Whoop, uh, either group, jump in, share your spreadsheet, tell me which criteria you chose and why and which product you recommended. Um, I can share from group one, I, I was, uh, tasked with you you were the scribe <laughs> okay super yeah um right yeah so i'll i'll um start I, I guess and then allow um anyone else in the group to jump in but you could see that we chose um in addition to profitability um organizational fit and competitor reactions okay um so organizational fit uh, we thought made the most sense because much of the conversation was about um, uh, the company's reputation and existing products and how a new product would either um, diversify their portfolio into a new market or add to their uh, existing portfolio in a current market. Okay. So um, I think parties seem to be uh, polarized about how, entering into a new market would impact their organization. Okay. Um, and your and you're competitor you're reaction. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, competitor reactions we chose because, um, uh, well, really we, we decided not to choose resource requirements because we thought that um, both of them had already been investigated thoroughly and it wouldn't, they would require the same amount of resource in order to um, actually launch the product. Um, so for that reason, we chose competitor reactions. Okay. And then your totals were 3.2 and 3.6. So did your group have time mm. to discuss whether or not you, um, would lean toward launching the B227 or whether you would make a decision that went against the numbers because they're not hugely different? Um, yeah, not, not really. We, we sort of began talking about profitability, but we didn't, uh, um, we didn't really get into talking about future growth. I don't, I don't think that came up at all. Uh, and okay. the fact that the A115 market is stable, whereas the B227 market is, is growing. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. 
And and typically in a in a in a in a full case analysis, you'd actually calculate, you'd have a side calculation on profitability. You actually work with some of the data in the case, but there's only so much we can do in an hour. Um, okay, mm -hmm. super. Um, so I have a question. So you chose to include competitor reactions um, and that mm -hmm. would be due to the nature of both markets. Is that the rationale? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then again, you weighted it fairly low rather than kind of weighting mm -hmm evenly was there a rationale for that yeah well we just thought that organizational fit based on the conversation was um a, a huge uh um just a we thought that organizational fit should have been weighted higher and we didn't want to um take weight from profitability because that is obviously very important so okay. um it was sort of like making up for the fact that organizational fit seemed to be weighted higher. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, sure. No, I, I get that. Um, all right. Group two, just uh, maybe throw your spreadsheet up. We, we're running short on time and I want to give you the epilogue, but tell me if you chose the same three criteria or different ones. Uh, I shared my screen up here. Okay. Uh, but, um, Wakey is actually going to present. Okay. So uh, we did not choose the same criteria. We, uh, we chose the competitor reactions and the resource requirements. Since, uh, this, uh, the, these are two uh, technical products and, uh, uh, and, uh, and we, think, uh, we think there's uh, a technical breakthrough in product uh, A115 and uh, a kind of a uh, master products of B two two seven. So, um, and we keep the same relative weights between these two cri uh, chosen criteria. And okay. uh, and uh, yeah, and profitability is important. So we keep the point four weights and uh, uh, to rate these two products. Uh, uh, we think. Um, uh, uh, we rate um, B227 uh, a five here for prof uh, profitability since uh, even though its marketing share is uh, decreasing this year, it uh, still have a really large, uh, like 25% um, of market share and uh, a, a very large marketing total. So we really high and, um, and it has uh, three competitors um yeah so for okay. product a uh its profitability uh since it's a smaller uh market size and uh its competitor um, takes up 95 percent of this whole market so we rate it, the competitor very high and uh the profitability relatively low so um so after calculation totals uh we think uh, this company should uh launch be two to five to okay. Or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Super. So we can take that screen back and I'll just, I'll give you a, a brief recap. It was interesting to see the second group chose resource requirements and what you could have considered. And, and again, organizational fit is there's some overlap between those two resource requirements. Um, you know, in thinking about um, familiarity with the market and the training and, and connections and networking that would have to be done to go into this other sector that they didn't currently have all those contacts and, and you could have argued that that would be part of the resource requirements other than just um, the chemicals themselves, like the raw material inputs. But I want to, I'd like to, uh, to provide an epilogue here. So um, interestingly enough, uh, the company chose to launch them both. Um, and the A115 lost a ton of money the first year or two. Um, and B227 started out strong and then everything flipped. Uh, A115 was proven to be the superior product. Uh, they recouped some of their losses and became profitable and B227 was phased out because it couldn't hold its own in that competitive landscape. So it's just very interesting to kind of look and, and, and see what the corporation did, but it's the process of thinking through, choosing the criteria and then you know, thinking about all of these other decisions that 
um, that's, that's fun, in my opinion. It's the fun aspect of analyzing um, marketing cases. So that is all I have. Are there any last questions before we wrap up? I guess my, I have one question. When you're talking about the profitability, um, are you talking more about the short term or long term? Because if you, you know, to your point, if you're going to do, if you're thinking about it in the long term, then a one, you know, one one five would would obviously be the right choice based off, you know, what you're what you were talking about. But if you're talking right. about just in the, you know, two to three years right now, right. Um, you know, I think you can make the argument that to your point, the resource implementation, the organizational fit definitely takes, um, the costs are much higher right. uh, initially. And you would think that the B227 would be more profitable. So that is, a, that is a great question. And what I would say is if, whether you're taking a course or whether you're interviewing, you're in a consulting interview, um, the, if the case doesn't specifically point to the fact that the company is large and has um, has sufficient resources to absorb um, losses initially, um, and or if the if the company profiled in the case is is a startup that's a little more cash strapped, you might adjust your analysis accordingly, or at a minimum talk through that with an interviewer. So I've, I've been involved with our career center who trains our undergrads in consulting interviews as well. And as long as you either verbally or in written fashion, state your assumptions based on anything. Now, you know, looking at this case, it's a chemical company. It doesn't appear to be a startup that's cash strapped for money. And I don't think it says anything to that effect. So that's a great question. And you would just talk through that if you were in a consulting interview so that the interviewer knew what you were considering. Great, thank you. Yep, sure. Anything else? Anything in the chat? Are we good? Yeah, I mean, you can type your questions in the chat as well. Okay. It's, it's fine if you want to wrap. Yeah. All right. I mean, that was fantastic. And uh, I think uh, it was amazing to see. Uh, I mean, the, the, the case was also really good. I, I had a fair bit of good. <laughs> so I, I, I could go through it. But unfortunately, I did not participate in giving the weeds. But anyway, so I'm going to share my uh, screen just to do a final announcement. So these are the uh, can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the list of these are the list of presentation for up until February twelfth, and we'll have more speakers come in. Uh, and please uh, register for these events and uh, let me know if you want some specific topics to consider or find speakers on some specific topics. Um, yeah. And that's it. Let me... Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. See you later. See you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.